Qualcomm. Qualcomm is a developer and supplier of sending and assisting software that is used to dominate the wireless and communication technology. Wireless and communication technology. Very diversified. I mean, it is a basic IT and software that creates a platform to design, selling, and other consumer Okay. Nice. Financial performance. So the net income margin, very impressive. Decrease in 2020, but as you can see, there was a dramatic rebound in 2021. The net income margin above the industry average. Industry average is about 18%, so it outperformed the industry average. The performance of the cost, yeah, it's one that one can live with. You can live with it. You know, costs have not increased at a rate that threatens profitability, you know, as evidenced by the margin. Cost growth is justified because it has resulted in growth in both the top and bottom line. So there has been an explosion in costs, but there's also been an explosion in my revenue as well as my net income and my margin. So cost is justified. Costs are resulting in a return both the top and the bottom line, which is driving very healthy competitive margins, having profitability. So R&D as a percentage of revenue is fairly stable. Uh, fairly stable, you know, above industry average, you know, which again one can live with because you know you do not want to fall behind competitors. So it's fairly stable, above industry average. There has been a growth in my top and bottom line. Margins are stable and growing, so that's a tick mark for me. Now, growth in revenues are all driven in the are driven in part due to the boom in, in semi demand as well as consumer electronics. So, but consumer electronics. So the fact that again Qualcomm has basically been opportunistic and has pounced on that demand and has turn that demand into increase in revenue, which highlights the, the strong performance of this company. Now, growth in revenue went a long way in improving. Seven weeks of three, now it's at 43 percent. So it's going a long way in terms of improving. The margins have, or well, growth in revenue and margin as well, have really improved. Now, growth in net income just indicates a company that is highly profitable, growing its market share. And this growth in net income again just supports my model. Now, the growing net income, a slight decrease, that will not flatten it's a massive decrease there. But as you can see, it really threatens my margins considering the fact that I do net income and net margin. So, I mean, Good performance overall, you know, good, good performance, indicates a very, very profitable company. Now, the financial position, current ratio, below industry average of about 2.37. However, it's not too concerning, considering that on average, uh, Qualcomm holds almost two current assets per current liability. So current assets exceed current liability by a factor of two. Very, very good. Has depreciated over a three year period, but still has remained satisfactory now. It's so below industry average, but it's still enough. Uh, asset test ratio, same, you know, as the, as the current ratio. Below industry average, the industry average of the asset test ratio is at 1.88. You can see all comments at the um, 1.66. So underperformed the industry average, depreciated a bit, but it's still not at a point that highlights an increase in liquidity risk. You know, both ratios are still at a level that one can consider, you know, what this balance sheet is significantly liquid. So Qualcomm has in 2021, it has 1.8. Four times liquid assets than it does current liability. So it can settle current liability as a do. So I think good. So both the current and the asset test ratio, they do not highlight any significant increase in liquidity. Uh, even though both matrices have underperformed uh, the industry average, the balance sheet is still significantly liquid. 
Levin, of course, mainly by the $7.1 billion in cash. We have to get a lot of cash. In there. The, inventories, the inventory days at an average of 81, 50, so just over 81 days is below the inventory average of 101 days, which is very good. And, you know, the inventory days does support the liquidity need when you read it together with the current asset search ratio. You know, Qualcomm does have enough liquid assets on hand to settle uh, current liabilities. So, but back to the industry, uh, sorry, back to the inventory ratio, uh, the inventory days. So, Qualcomm does not hold inventory for much longer than needed, you know, considering the industry average is just over 101 days, 101 days, and Qualcomm on every close stock for just over 81 days. So it's good performance. It's a good sign of asset management. Don't hold inventory for longer than needed. It's improving uh, what is it your liquidity, improving your liquidity. So a lot of your liquid assets are a lot of your short-term assets are tied up in liquid that can be generally converted to cash. It's a good sign. There isn't any burden on the, on the balance sheet in terms of liquidity. There isn't any burden on your margins. So there isn't an increase in holding costs. So that is very good. Um, debt to equity is by far, by, 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 by far, my goodness, by far above the industry average. The industry average is about 126%. Debt to equity on average is sitting at 457 That is a lot. That, that, that is a lot. Um, um, you know what? Just, just back to the ROE. You know, look, the ROE, I mean, the ROE is a bit insane. <laughs> uh, the ROE of, uh, of Qualcomm is a bit insane, but it's very good. You know, it, it has overperformed the industry. The industry average for ROE is 20%. On average, Qualcomm is at 117 percent. So this is very good, but again, it can be explained by good margin, strong revenue growth. So a good return on ROE, meaning that Qualcomm achieves above market returns on capital invested. So debt to equity, as I said. It's above the industry average. Now, this indicates a heightened risk financial risk on the balance sheet. The burden of the financial sheet is a lot of financial risk. Even though there is a productive relationship between debt being risk and return being the ROI, as the ROI has been increasing, you know, as, well, as the debt equity has been increasing, ROI has, you know, return equity has also been increasing. increasing. But there is a positive relationship in the fact that above industry debt to equity, above industry return on equity. But even though there is a productive relationship between uh, debt and um, return on equity, the financial risk for me is just too high. I mean, that just has a significant amount of financial risk on, um, on the balance sheet. Okay, so the cash margin is very impressive, slightly below the industry average of 32%. But it has been increasing. You know, it, 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 it has been improving yearly. And this margin indicates to me a company that can generate cash from its operations. So it's good, it's below the average, but I can live with it. It is good. You know, Qualcomm has cash positive operations. The sufficiency of cash flow very impressive, above the industry average. You know, industry average is about 0 0.84, and Qualcomm is at 0 0.92, so it's above industry average. That 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 is very good. And in 2021, it achieved an above one uh, sufficiency of cash flow. Uh, you know, considering the amount of debt it has, you know. You know, it does have enough, it does generate enough cash from operation to separate which is good. You know, which is very, very, very good. Okay, so total shareholders return. So this will include dividends and buybacks. Above the industry norm, which number of 46%, and 
are coming from one of the only three percent of the bulk industry average. Um, so children are definitely getting rewarded, in my view. You know, it is, however, very cheap stock, considering the fact that the average PE is what? Just over 14 and Qualcomm is just over 20. So it's a relatively cheap stock. Um, however, too risky for me. <laughs> you know, even though, yes, it does generate enough cash from operations to you know, settle um, the debt. Too risky. That's way too much financial risk. 